Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to Carmen Gloria Perez about Young Royals on Netflix and a lot of other things as well. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for having me. I want to kind of talk about Young Royals and a lot of things, but I do want to ask you, you have a very interesting um, story in terms of how you became an actor and a storyteller and a performer. So can you kind of tell us a little bit about your journey before we kind of get into some of your projects? Uh, Yeah, I actually did not think I was going to pursue the arts at all. Uh, My dad was a bass player and everything, but I didn't even think uh, anything of it. I was in the military. I joined when I was 17. And then I studied international politics. <laughs> and then literally a month, about a month before I graduated, I just, I was reading the newspaper and I read an ad about an acting class for a weekend. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be fun. Why not? And then I did the class and I just fell in love with it. And then a month after I graduated, I just drove to Hollywood. I feel like if there's a lot of situations more and more now where you could prepare and have ideas maybe of like what you want to do, but you can look at the ever kind of sense of things. You can't really like it just, things just happen. It feels like. Right. Right. Yeah. It's and especially when you're really trying to listen to yourself, like what you really want to do, because I kind of didn't really know. I mean, I was like, I loved uh, international relations. You know, yep. I thought that's what I was going to do. I wanted to work for the department of States I was a big fan of Madeleine Albright and, you know, I I just really thought I was going to take that path. And then Mm -hmm. suddenly I didn't realize I had this other passion, you know, and and a bigger passion. So, yeah, yeah, I can do anyone, I guess. Right. And you are currently living in Norway, right? You're in Oslo. No, I'm I'm about an hour south of Oslo. Okay, so Oslo is obviously is that kind of where all the like. Like, so obviously there's the big cities and everything. Is that where, like, the big hub where a lot of the productions are filmed, like Oslo? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, that's the main place. But they film a lot up north, too. Absolutely. uh, So what kind of, what drew you towards, you know, going to Oslo? We talked about on email a little bit, but can you talk a little bit about, about, a bit about that move? I'm curious about that. Uh, Well, like most of us uh, foreigners, uh, I moved here for love. And uh, so uh, uh, my guy is Norwegian. And uh, so we moved out here and uh, yeah, it's, it's totally different. You know, how many years have you been there for four? Wow. It's quick how time goes. So you, so basically you were, yeah. So you were there maybe a couple of years before like the pandemic, the global pandemic pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. And it was really weird. I had just visited my family in, in Florida and Puerto Rico, uh, and the pandemic had just hit, you know, this was the beginning of last year. I was traveling the end of February, beginning of March. And I remember I was stuck in Frankfurt airport for like six hours. And I was, and all the news about Corona was coming out. And I was just like, nobody was wearing masks. It was the beginning of everything. And I was like, oh my God, am I going to die? And, you know, but anyway, it worked out. And uh, it's, I it, I, I, And here's the thing, you know, we're talking about, Young Royals on Netflix. I mean, you're in that show. I mean, it is, it's, it's, it's interesting because I feel like obviously there's an opportunity for this to happen. If you're on a show like that, because of the global access and 190 countries have access to Netflix, but I don't think, I think people maybe like, I don't think people realized how huge this show was going to be. I feel like if they, I think they're lying. If they knew they were going to be a smash. hit. It's so true. You know, I read the script and I remember, and you know, I was learning Swedish too. So I was like reading the script and I, and I was like, man, this is really good. And like, this is really great. Like I've never read anything like that actually. And I, I was really impressed and I, I, but I still didn't even know it was going to be as big as, as it is. So yeah. It's interesting. And did it blow your mind how quick it was too, Carmen? Like it wasn't even that it became big. I think the thing that freak, like freaks me out about a lot of these TV shows is how quick it is. Like, you know, yeah. Small Burn, you know what I mean? It shows up for three months and becomes big. I get that. Yeah. But it wasn't even like two weeks. And yeah, that's the power like of superstars. Netflix, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, it's, the power, it's the power of Netflix and 
It's amazing. I mean, uh, I, I, you know, they deserve it. You know, everybody deserves it because I think everybody does such an amazing job and I'm just like so honored to even be a part of it. I know I'm just a small part, but it's, it's, uh, you know, I, the messages I get, I'm like, oh, I, I thought I was just a little part of moving the story, but I, you know, it's a integral part as well. And well, absolutely. Yeah. And it's, both both your screen kids, Frida and Omar, I mean, you know, what was that what was that like working with them and everything? You know, if I had kids, I wish they were like them. Yeah. They, they were just amazing. They were both so, so cool and so like such a great head on their shoulders and such nice people. All the kids. Like, you know, I showed up and you know, us the parents, we didn't work on set like every day like they did. And I showed up and most of them were like, hi, how are you, Carmen? And like, everybody was so nice. And uh, Edwin came up and like introduced himself the first day. And wow. I mean, everybody was great. So they everybody deserves the success. You so know? how did the opportunity for you to be on Young Worlds come to be? Obviously, you know, there's auditioning, right? Yeah. You know, you yeah, audition. Yeah, I- but is there like a story it, about that? How you got oh, involved totally. in the project? It was actually my my very first Zoom audition. So wow. I was so nervous. I'm like, I was like sweating. You kidding me? <laughs> yeah, totally. It was my first Zoom audition. And it was with the, there's a, I guess apparently they had been casting in Sweden and couldn't find the person there. So then they decided to expand to Denmark and Norway because the languages are very similar. I can speak Norwegian. So, uh. um, so then what happened was uh, the casting director contacted me and then I had a Zoom audition with her and, the, and one of the directors, Erica, who's based out of Norway. So they were in the same room and it, because of Corona, they were in separate desks. Everybody was in separate computers and, and uh, yeah, we had the audition and then uh, I had a call back, but I had to fly to Sweden because they wanted to test me with Omar. And so that was a call back and that was on a Thursday. And they said, we're supposed to know on Friday if Netflix, Netflix approves and, and uh, Friday came by and nothing happened. So I was there all weekend like, oh, did I get the part? Did I get the part? And then Monday uh, I found out. And, wow. uh, yes. This is why I kind of, one of the reasons why I kind of started the show too. I love having those conversations where you never know and everything. That's so cool to me. Um, you obviously, you're living in Norway right now. Um, Ragnarok, huge show. I love Norway. that show. It's so good. And yes. I had an opportunity to talk to most of the cast on my show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it it blows my mind how excited the whole cast is about the fact that it it is like they're so overwhelmed but excited about the fact that they now, because of that show, have fans from all around the world. Yeah. And I feel like for a lot of people, that might be hard to take in like i'm just curious for you i mean you're obviously um you know uh like it's one i'm just curious what it was like for you because maybe it was difficult for a lot of the actors that were like the young like the, the teens on the show right because they're young it's their first like they haven't been around a lot of it before but what, was it overwhelming for you seeing everything exposed like, i'm curious about that it is overwhelming because uh, even though I've been in the business for a long time, yeah. uh, and but I, it was before Netflix. There's all the bigger shows that I've worked on were like Nip Tuck back in like 2000. You know, it was a long, long time ago. So there was no Netflix. There was no, you know, it wasn't like as you don't know how the international uh, market uh, impacts uh, the, the kind of impact you have globally, I guess, yeah. it, back then, the way you do now. So um, yeah, it's just, it's just beautiful. It's uh, I think I lost my train of thought. Cause I was like, <laughs> yeah. no, it's, it's, it's interesting. I mean, I got, I got to speak to Malte Garnier who plays August, yeah. who yeah. is being labeled as one of the biggest villains on TV in the last decade on some oh, good. it's cra- it's crazy yeah. to see like <laughs> it's crazy to see the impact that yeah. villain character has got like it is it's crazy and you know <laughs> what i it's in the acting too right because yeah. he's such a great actor so i think it's a combo of everything and- but it, it, it it's interesting to me and i feel like a lot of the diehard fans of the show will just be like no you don't you have no idea what you're talking about he's bad but there's a misunderstood aspect of, Mal- of 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 August 
and you see a little bit of his like his his, his background, where he came from, and mm-hmm. why he does certain things. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it, it's 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 very difficult to defend that character. Um, right. Is it interesting to be part of a show that, you know, you do this show, it's a global phenomenon, but that has a lot of these complex characters that have a lot going on as well, Carmen? It's amazing. I mean, it's it really shows um, that, you know, what you, you know, what somebody has on the surface is not necessarily what's going on inside. And, mm-hmm. and you know, everybody has sort of a, a, a facade when they're, you know, you know, everybody wants to be loved and be cool, so they try their best, but sometimes their best is usually sometimes the worst. In his case, sometimes he's really trying to find his way, and everybody's sort of trying to find their way and and in their own way. And uh, it's it's beautifully written that way. I think the writing. I, I was watching an interview with Lisa and and Reda, and she was and they were talking about how they were looking at different perspectives on how to yep. approach each each theme. And, uh, you know, as a storyteller myself, I'm like, wow, yeah, that's right. Like, you know, I I learned just from that, you know, it's amazing how they really tapped into all these different aspects of uh, different themes, you know, and uh, yeah. And very quickly before we wrap up, I mean, it was announced that that you guys are getting a season two, which is amazing. I mean, I feel like it was a matter of, I feel like it was a matter of when it was going to be announced rather than if to be honest with you i mean like it was huge you know to be although you never know sometimes um what excites you maybe with your character with everyone else about a season two very quickly what excites you about is it just kind of simply as you know seeing where the story goes like what excites you about it i mean yeah i'm excited to see where the story goes yeah. for sure i mean uh it can go so many different ways, you know, it's like funny reading like the fan stuff and like see where they're potentially could be going. And uh, so I'm just excited. I mean, um, I don't know how uh, things are going to develop, but I'm just excited to see where, where Lisa takes it. And, and uh, you know, it, it it's just, it, there's so many, it's one thing for it to be, like you're you're it's announced so there's all this excitement and then it's funny because it's announced and then it's not even maybe shot yet or depending on the situation and then all of a sudden there's all these like questions like when is it going to be out when is it going to be out it's like (laughs) it's it's crazy to see um thank you so much for taking some time i really really appreciate it thank you thank Uh, you so much so if they haven't already they can catch you and young royals now on netflix season one which is, <laughs> or they can rewatch and everything. And where can people follow you on social media to keep updated with everything? Uh, most of my social media is under um, at the Carmen Gloria. Amazing. Well, this has been Pop Turn of YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. Until next time, this is Carmen Gloria Perez and PD Beats signing Thank off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.